All right, folks. Um, got another one. Got another little request. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, how did I break my young dogs off a deer when it came up? So, you know, if you've got a dog that goes out and trails a deer up or something like that, you got problems. I'm not saying he can't be broke off of, but, you know, I've old, heard the old, you know, scenario of put him in a barrel, roll him down a hill with a deer, deer skin in there, put a goat in a pen with him. I've heard everything, you know. Um, I'll tell you, for me, I think the more you keep your pups with that rabbit smell, the more you keep them in rabbits, where you'll get into problem with, especially with young dogs, if you go out and hunt, and you hunt in a spot where it turns out there's not many rabbits there, and uh, a deer just pops up right in front of those young dogs, or if they come to a bother and they've been struggling a little bit, and a, you know how a deer will get up right there, and they'll shoot on them. So, a couple scenarios. I'll tell you, you know, everybody's got different methods. Um, when I do have to break one off deer, and it's not really often, but when I do, and I have had to, um, I mean, I'll just, I, you know, I, I've gotten where now I share a lot of my stuff, and I told a guy the other day, I was like, you know, most of my stuff, like I, I hung around a lot of old timers and stuff like that right there, and man, loved them, but to be honest with you, a lot of that old folklore, I left there, man. I mean, a lot of those times have changed. When I was a kid, we used to hunt river bottoms, old dairy uh, farms and stuff like that. I mean, rabbits used to stay up on the creek banks, stuff like that. Man, now you got to hunt as thick. So times change, you know, different situations. So a lot of that old folklore, man, I I love it. I know a lot of it. I don't, I don't pay attention to a whole lot of it. I kind of keep it in my back pocket and it's good memories and stuff like that. And that's about it. But, all right, I'll tell you how, I, when 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 I'm breaking my young dogs off a deer, what I do. I like to go out and I like to find a deer, stand in a field or whatever else. Put the collar on my dog, turn him out. I don't hike him on a deer or whatever else. But I turn him loose, and I know I'm going to kind of walk him in the direction that deer is. And so people will say, don't put him straight on a deer. Why? I want to know what he'll do. All right? Why would I not? That's exactly the time. I'm not hiking him on him. Now, I agree with you there. I'm not going to hike him on a deer. But, of course, I'm going to turn him loose right there where I know it's going to be. I want him on a hot track. That's what I want. I want to see how he's going to react on a hot track. Because if he's trailing a deer up and i've seen dogs like that never owned any but i've seen ones like that you got problems you got serious problems if they're trailing deer up you got problems all right and what i mean by trailing them up i'm not saying a deer in the bed but they'll work a cold track till it gets hot you got problems if they do that on a deer you got you got serious problems so what i do get the collar i always try to make sure it's either a good heavy dew on the ground or it's rained. I want the grass really wet. Grass, ground, everything. I want it really wet. All right? I want the ground really wet. I want the dog to be able to get wet. All right? Now, I'm not going to take and put a bucket of water on him or nothing else. I'm just saying I want him to get wet naturally. Naturally. All right? So whether it's a heavy dew or it's rained or whatever else, that's what I'm looking for. If it's drizzling at the time, take and drop him. I know that. Deer's in the field, take and drop him. I let him work that way. When he starts working that track, when he starts opening up, I pound him. And, you know, I've seen guys come on and say, oh, if you got dogs and you got to run a call on them, man, get out of here with that old mess. There's many reasons you run collars on dogs. Collars don't make a dog run a rabbit better. So, if you can run your dog and you're confident enough without collars, man, good for you. But don't sit here and hand me some stuff like, oh, uh, uh, if you got to run collars on your dogs, uh, they, they ain't no good anyway. They ain't? So the collar makes them a better dog? 
I like knowing where mine are. So, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I just, I laugh at what guys say. You know, they try to act like, oh, okay, this is the old school way, and if you ain't doing it this way, whatever, man, whatever. Don't let people fluctuate you, whatever. So I hammer down on that dog. Now he's a little wet, okay? So when you're a little wet and you get that electricity, what happens? It's just two or three times stronger, all right? Hammer all the way until that dog's at my feet. All the way. If if you go out and run with me and your dog, we run the same style dog, and your dog opens up on the off game, my dog's going to come straight to my feet. My broke dogs, that's what they're going to do. They're going to come straight to my feet because they know I don't play on that stuff. All right? So if you run a deer, that's what my broke dogs are going to do. They're going to come straight back to my feet. They're going to tell on you. That's the way, you know, some people it's complicated or whatever else, but that's what I do with my young dogs. That's exactly the way. And if I have to do it over to it, if it's like a, a – I mean, mine don't really even have to run deer. I mean, I do this to test them. When mine get 10 to 12 months old, even if they haven't run a deer, this is what I do. I make sure. Now, if I come up on a dead carcass of a deer or whatever in the woods, if my dogs even smell of it, I shock them. And people say, oh, no, I want you to think deer smell bad. That's exactly what I want you to think. Deer smell bad. So if you ever, my dogs ever come across a carcass or whatever, and they go up and start trying to smell, I shock them. Right there. And people can say, I mean, I don't care if you think it's mean or whatever. I could care less. I'm just telling you, I want mine to to equate in their brain, deer smell, bad. Leave it alone. That's what I do. So if I have to do that process on turn them out in that field two or three different times, you're not going to stay here. You know, I should be able to turn you out. At the most, you should try it once, right? Or either you shouldn't do it at all. But if you try it one time, boom, I got to pop you. After that, I shouldn't have to worry about you no more. And if I do, I mean, you're probably going to part ways. I'm not going to consistently have to worry about wh whether you run the deal or not. It's not you're not going to stay here. You're not going to stay here. And people will tell you it's in the bloodline. Man, shut up. Get out of here. I, I don't even want to hear that stuff. I don't even want to hear it. I think some guys are really good when they break at dogs and they keep that rabbit smell, keep them around good broke dogs. Th that's a key to it, man. You know, that's a key to it. Everybody's different. But that's my little insight right there. That's what I do when I'm breaking my dogs on deer. Take care, fellas. Always enjoy it.